So let's learn about opening and managing an SFML window. Go to their website, click Learn, Tutorials, scroll down to Window Module, and click Opening and Managing the Window. So you can use this as your reference for this. And uh, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go to Xcode. And if you watched the previous video, you should have your Xcode template all set up with SFML. And so the first thing we're going to do, just to make sure that things are easier to show, is we're going to go using namespace standard. And we're going to type include iostream, which is going to allow us to show console output. And the using namespace is so that we don't have to type this crap. So we have create the main window. And this SF render window is just like an integer or a float, but it's actually a variable called SF render window. So that's how you should think about it. We're, we're naming our variable window. We can name this whatever we want, whatever we want. We call it window one, two, three. We would have to change everything, all the other windows to be window one, two, three when we do that. You don't have to remember the syntax uh, of this, like the order of this. You can just go to that tutorial and look at how it's formatted. Uh, we're going to change the video mode um, width and height dimensions. That's what these are, X and Y. And this is actually how things are usually formatted in SFML. We have our X and Y. So we can change our width to being 1,000. We could change our height to being 800. We could then go over here and in our quotation marks change the title of the window, which is shown at the top. It's a title. We could change it to, I want to learn SFML Woot Source. Okay, and then we are going to run our Xcode project and see the changes that we made. So now we have a thousand wide and 800 tall, and we changed the title up here to whatever we wanted. So let's learn how to customize things after we've created and initialized this window. So we're just going to go to their um, tutorial right here. And if we wanted to make it full screen, for instance, we could just copy that code that they gave us, add a comma, and paste the SF style full screen. Last time this didn't work on the first one, but if you keep running it, it should. So, okay, it works first time. Now we're full screen. So we don't really want to be full screen, so we're just going to delete that. And you can see the different things that you can change right here by adding them in. But it's not really important, and you probably won't use that very much. What we're going to do is we're going to change the parameters after. So we can set the Windows position relative to the desktop. So we're just going to copy that code. And right after we created our window, we're going to go window dot set position and accessing dot set position is very common in SFML and we're going to create an SF vector 2i with our X dimension and our Y dimension and so how it works in SFML is the origin is at 0 0 and going in the um, positive X direction is positive but it's different from a traditional uh, Cartesian coordinate system in that Y being positive is downward. So normally uh, positive Y is upward and SFML positive Y is downward. So you really need to remember that or you're going to be very confused. So let's say we want to spawn in our uh, window at 300 by 300, 300 over by 300. We're just going to change these to 300, 300. And now we should be able to run it and see the changes. And it did spawn in over here. So that's good. Let's go over here and let's change the size of the window. You see, we already set the size right here, 1000 by 800. Let's say we wanted to change it or maybe we're in our game loop and we want to change it to something else for some reason. Let's make it 300 by 300. And we should be able to see the um, change. So we have our little tiny window now.
let's just comment these out. And we can also change the title. And I'm probably getting redundant now, but you would just change right here. So this is how you access the window to change the different parameters. You type window and then dot. And you have all these different options, like you can set the size, or you can, oh, that was get size, but you can, you can set the size, and it shows you, oh, look, you need a vector 2i. Or we can set the position like we did before, or all these things, and you can just, you can just scroll, scroll down and see all the things that you can do. Or you can also go to their tutorial on the website. But you shouldn't be needing to do this very much. Um, if we wanted to get the width of the window, which could be useful for, let's say, spawning a sprite in at it, like half of the window, here's how we could do that. What we're going to do is, don't worry about all this stuff right here, but right after window.clear is where we sort of do stuff in our game loop. So just leave a bunch of spaces there and I'm going to show you how we can show what the width is of the window. So let's do a C out, so a console out, um, and we're going to go window.getSize.x. So we're getting the width of the window and we're just going to leave a space and we're going to window.getSize.y and it's going to show the height. So now every frame, our console is going to be showing the width and the height of our window. So right here on our console output, we have 1000 by 775. So that's pretty much it with um, just creating a window and getting it up and running. Uh, now to actually display things to the window, we use our game loop. So here's the start of the game loop. And these are just saying that we're, our event is that our window is open. You don't really need to worry about it. Um, it says if the event is closed, then close the window with window.close. Um, also, if our keyboard, uh, our key pressed is the escape key, we're going to also close the window. And that's going to exit out of our game loop. But we first have clearing the window, which is very important, and you need to make sure that this is at the right spot in your game. So we go window.clear, window.clear. And this basically gets rid of all of the crap on our window, every single frame, at the beginning. So this should be the starting point for all of the stuff you're going to do during your game loop. What we then do is we're drawing a sprite to the window which is a little image with a position and size. And we're also drawing text. So in order to do that, which we'll get into in a later video on sprites and text, is we go window.draw, and then we're just going to put the sprite in. Or if we had a rectangular shape, we could go window.draw, and then rect. Or window.draw text. So we cleared the window, we're then drawing something to the window, it's being plastered on there, and then we're going to go window.display, which updates the window so that we can view what's happening. And this happens every single frame, and this is our main game loop. And so that is pretty much all you need to know about windows to get started. There's also views, which we can get to in a more advanced lesson, so if your player is uh, moving, what we can do is we can have a, a view overlaid and we can make it so that the view follows the player and so that we always see where he is basically. And that's actually not very difficult, but it's not very important right now. So thanks for watching and uh, like the video if you thought it was okay and I'll see you in the next one.